Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. The purchase and pricing direct question line from you to me and my crew for your questions about buying this or any watch you see here on Watchbox Reviews. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing a lovely D-Series 2006 Rolex Oyster Perpetual GMT Master II, reference 16710 in stainless steel. It's a handsome look at the way we were prior to the super case GMTs. Now you can see the watch 40 millimeters diameter is in profile, 12 millimeters thick, making it nice and thin by the standards of a sports watch. From lug to lug, 47.4 millimeters, and if you include the solid end links of the bracelet, which is reference 78790A, you can see the watch is 50 millimeters, 0.5, all the way across the wrist with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Pop open that 78790A bracelet, and we'll throw it on the wrist and get a quick look, and we'll talk about the hardware. As you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it wears easily low, flat, flush, even thinner than its nominal thickness, because it nestles down easily sliding underneath the cuff, no issues with formal attire. This is your sports watch, but it's also your dress watch. It's an interesting transitional look at Rolex, because this was the end of the five digit GMT Master, and you can see some of the evolution along the way. The solid lugs after the F series You've got the solid end links here rather than hollow, but you will note it is a hollow center link bracelet with a solid end link. Like I said, really a transitional reference in some regards. Polished outer faces to the bracelet, satin tops, and as you can see, removable links fixed by screws. The clasp is in outstanding condition. As you can see, the crown remains sharply defined, as do the stamped link style ridges inboard. You can see and verify. Let's see if I can show that. The serial stamp as well as the reference of the bracelet and then you can see that it is in outstanding condition you've got a little bit of that vintage style rolex rattle but with the solid end link profile you can see that the case is immaculate even full symmetrical lugs on all four corners you can see the satin tops the polished flanks and then the polished lip of the bezel which has that lovely blue and red pepsi as you can see, it looks more like a Pepsi can because prior to the Supercase, this is anodized aluminum, just like a Pepsi can. Bidirectional rotating, it has a nice sharp feel. It's actually a little bit more mechanical than most bidirectional bezels feel, and I like that. I like the fact that it seems like a machine with a sharp detent. A little bit like a dive bezel, but bidirectional. Three time zones, if you do set the 24 hour hand to Greenwich Mean Time, you will use the airport or port GMT offset of destination to use the bezel to calculate the local or that is arrival time. So you have time at center, 12 hour format. You have a second time zone settable in a 24 hour format and you can use GMT offsets in conjunction with the bezel to calculate a third time zone. Black lacquer dial, and I'm actually gonna show you something on this dial that I know is gonna be of interest to some. I think there are too many Rolex dial distinctions and nicknames, but some will call this the stick error dial rather than standard serif and linked double vertical Roman numerals for the GMT Master II, you have these two vertical non-serif sticks. What does it mean? Basically, it's just characteristic of the watches made in this time frame. This is mid D series. I don't think it should be a basis for gouging anyone on price or hyping the model. It's just a mark of identification for those who are scholars of timepieces. You know roughly when this watch was made just by looking at the dial. Now the timepiece of course features white gold hands and indices and these are precisely so the watch doesn't tarnish or oxidize over time. The markers will never transform. Inside the case, Rolex Manufacture Caliber 3185 with a screw down crown, all of this 100 meters water resistant, 31 joules, bi-directional winding, 48 hour power reserve, eight beats per second. It's shock resistant with a free sprung balance and a full balance bridge. And it features a overcoil hairspring made by hand, a Breguet overcoil, and it is adjusted in five positions. The overcoil and the five position adjustment helping the watch to earn its COSC chronometer certification. The watch, of course, features hacking or stop seconds, and there's a 12 and 24 hour time zone individual adjustment. So you could see how I'm able to set the local time separately from the seconds hand, the minutes hand, and the 24 hour hand. You'll also note that I can jump the date forward or backwards depending on which direction I'm traveling. A pilot's watch? Sure. Created in 1954 by Rolex 4 Pan Am, it remains the pilot's Rolex. However, it's also a beautifully well-rounded companion and one of the last of the old-school five-digit GMT Master IIs. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And we're back with the GMT Master II D-Series by night.